Hey, what's going on? There he is. All righty then. Oh my goodness. I had some dad jokes today. Oh man. Are we gonna are we gonna hear some today? No, it was made up on the fly. It was good. You can make up dad jokes on the fly? Oh yeah. I'm because, terrible at that. No, because they were sitting there talking about my truck today. And they're like, <laughs> Oh, look at it, it's front end damage. Look at that. Uh, oh, the exhaust, this and that. I was like, listen, the deer hit me. I had an accident with it. It's no big deal. They're like, how the gear hit you? And did the gear actually pay for it? I was like, no, it's out of dough. <laughs> it fucked its way out of it. And like, <laughs> that that <laughs> one is bad. That is bad. That is definitely <laughs> that, really that, is, that is really bad. <laughs> hey, Joe. <laughs> up, Joe? That is yeah. So now I'm gonna pass it yeah. to you guys. If Tom would have said that one, he'd have lost five <laughs> points for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, welcome to Biblical Chili, everybody. Uh, today we're going to be talking about miracles. Um, this was a oh my goodness! I mean, can I call it an explosion on the chili chat? Oh, was a good time. It just yeah, it just grew, and it grew so big so fast. But it was such a good. Um, it's such a good question to ask because I've, I've actually gotten questions like this before. Um, one time I was talking to somebody who's actually, they, they classify themselves as spiritual. Uh, so that is just like, that's like a wild card, if you know what I mean. When, you, when somebody comes up to you and says, like, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual kind of thing. So it's like, it can be a wild card. It can, it can mean something good. It can mean something bad. So I got I got into talking to him for several hours. I was actually training him, so I got to I got to hang out with him for several days. Had a captivated audience, uh, but anyway, so that was one of the things that he brought up was well, you know, in the Old Testament, God does a lot of miracles, and um, there's there's a whole bunch of things that the Lord does that that's written down. Yet it doesn't seem like He does anything now. And so his argument was, you know, he was like actually very. I I would actually have po posted him as like or pinned him as like a relatively agnostic like a, a very willing to have the conversation kind of agnostic so uh but it was it was interesting though because that was that was one of the things that he brought up was about the miracles and in scripture and in the miracles today so uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and discuss that today um i put a pool out a pool a poll out there in the uh, in the uh, interwebs, and we got a, we got a very interesting uh, result. Uh, not a, not a ton of people voted in, but it was still a very interesting result. Um, the question was: Does God still perform miracles? If yes, how? And <laughs> apparently, people don't like to comment. That's okay. Uh, Ninety-one percent said yes. Five percent said no. Four percent said kinda. And we had a couple of comments in the bottom, which I'm sure will, will be brought up. So, because it was just, it was just you and me, I think. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and bring that up. I'm, I'm sure it'll come up at some point. So, I, I would say, as as far as like the poll goes, it, it seems like uh, humanity, at least, or at least in, in our small sphere of influence, uh, believes in miracles. So what what about you guys? Do you believe in miracles? I, I would start singing, but you don't want to hear that. <laughs> I think I mean, it, I think it's a song. I mean, honestly, it's been a weird day. Okay, so I mean, it's not like it'd be <laughs> uncommon. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we're we're not gonna go that far. Yeah, we're not going that far. Yeah, no, no. And suddenly, the viewership dropped to zero. <laughs> We are now in the negative. Yeah, we are now in the negative. <laughs> They're going to pay us to go away. I'll tell you, I, be, I do believe in miracles. I do believe, it, I do believe they're possible. Um, not from the physical standpoint, like I can perform them. Um, but I would say like a supernatural miracle, I would say that it, it happens. What about you guys? I'm going to go with yes. So but, you'd be in that 91 percentile? Yeah. I, 
I would say yes also, but I'm just wondering if the people that don't think he is just haven't seen it. That's that's a good that's a good point. That's a good point. Or can they? Well, you usually when when something like that comes up, it's is it more, or maybe I should just ask in, in another question, is it more that they're actually looking for it or are they denoting or translating something that they've seen as not a miracle? Because the term miracle is a very subjective definition. Um, because what I define as something that's, that was supernatural, you might define as something totally natural and you know regular. What about you, Joe? I do. I do believe, I do believe in miracles. Um, I will say, um, as, as, as I echo, um, for those of you that don't know you, if you, if you're on the poll and you see down in the comments, uh, comment section, buddy walk with Jesus, that's me. Yep. Um, that's my ministry. Um, as I, as I alluded to there, um, uh, and in the chili chat, it's nuanced. I think that uh, I think there's there's certainly um, I, I think there's certainly guardrails that we need to pay attention to as far as that goes. But I'm curious about something, so I'm I'm going to spring this on you guys. I have found in my time being in front of the being in front of the microphone that if you expect other people to get authentic or to or to chime in or something like that, that you have to be the reason. You have to be the one that starts it. <clears throat> so I'm curious. We all think that miracles are a thing. And a lot of people who think that miracles are a thing would sound off and say that they have experienced a miracle, that they have seen a miracle um, in, in the flesh. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take what I what I said one step further. And if anybody else would say that they have experienced a miracle, go ahead and sound off because people need to know that it's a safe environment to be able to share this stuff. Cause this stuff can get weird for some, for some people to, to express and for some people to hear. So I'll start. I'm going to, I'm going to mention three. Um, my, the, the first one, um, I was a part of a, of a relatively small church and this woman had, had come in and she, um, had on again, off again, battles with cancer throughout her life. Um, and, and turns out that, that the cancer was back for, um, I think it was round three, I think. Um, and so she comes up and this is not like for a frame of reference, it was a non-denominational church, but the guy who planted the church was, he jokingly called him, called himself a refugee of the Baptist denomination. <laughs> like it was all in fun, but like you could tell yeah, yeah. he was very much influenced at, by his his Baptist upbringing. So this this was by no means a what what would normally be um, what normally would, be, would would come across as like a charismatic church or something like that. Believed in the gifts, but nothing nothing too wild. Yeah. Um, she comes forward and and just everybody kind of took turns praying over her. Um, and a couple weeks later, she goes back to the doc, uh, back to the doctor. Cancer gone, one hundred percent gone. Um, and she hadn't started taking like meds or treatments or anything of the sort. So I would say that that's probably the one time in my life that I have I have experienced divine or been adjacent to divine healing. Um, two is. Um, my current story with my wife. Now, two two of the three of you guys have met her. Um, we were high school sweethearts, and it did not end well. And we were two very different people. I got saved, was getting ready to move back to Pennsylvania. Um, and I just, I don't know, call it a feeling. Call it that still small voice on your shoulder. Um, reach out to her. Reach out to her. You know, I'm like, okay, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be really happy to hear that I hear that I'm coming back to Pennsylvania. You want me to reach out to one of the one of the people who absolutely will not be. <laughs> and so um, I did, and we talked, and yada yada yada. One thing leads to another, and 
um, we're, we're on our fourth year of marriage. Um, the third one is when I was, when I was, a uh, when I was a kid, um, I apparently had, if any of you guys are Ted Nugent fans out there, right? Cat, scratch, cat scratch fever. Um, <laughs> that's actually a thing. That's actually it, that, uh, a real Ooh. illness. Um, and so I was a baby, had uh, got got scratched by a stray, had cat scratch fever, was basically boiling from from the inside out. Um, the the they would have needed to take very serious medical um, uh, solutions and in, and in, into our into their own hands. Had I not uh, had the fever not broken, next day doctors come in, fever's gone, completely broken like and and the illness is um discharged the same day um so yeah those are my i i, I those are three of those are three of the big ones now with some of the spiritual encounters that i've had in my life and those kinds of things um you I, I, those may fall in for some into the category of miracles i would call them spiritual encounters personally which is something different than a miracle but those are the the my my big three I don't. I don't know. I would still classify like a healing as a miracle, right? Or no? Well, it's a it's a miracle. Yeah. Okay. 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 Especially when it's something that there really was no kind of a cure for. Yeah. It's, I, wow. Yeah. That's that's funny. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can. I can think of my life as a miracle there's several times i should have been dead yeah when i was a rebellious teenager oh all you teenagers out there <laughs> we used to go out and party all the time and for some odd reason we went down this one road i don't know how we made it down the road and i went we went back through there the next day and back then, they were putting these sewer lines in, which you could ride a car through those sewer lines. And they had holes dug. They were probably, I dare say, 20 feet deep by 20 feet long. I, to this day, don't know how we got through them. Hmm. So that was up. It was always a miracle, but I did find out later that every time I went out, my mom was always praying for me. She knew what I was up to, but she was always on her knees praying for me. So I think that in itself is a miracle. Wow. Sally? I have a couple. Um, I'm not, not not trying to cut you off, Sean. If you have any more, go ahead and join it, jump in. But yeah, go ahead, Sully. Oh, uh, so when I was actually first taken away from my mother, I actually prayed the fact that I'd actually be in a better situation than a few uh, less than a month later, shortly after September 11th, 2001, I actually was taken away from my mother right out of school, after school, and put into my aunt's house. At this point in time, I actually missed half of the fifth grade, barely eight, didn't actually really go to school, anything like that, and so got transferred into that. Then uh, there was one point in time, me and a friend of mine took the uh, family minivan up north mm. around here, we were playing around, and next thing I know, I get a call saying the fact that I have to go back downstate because they need the van. Well, come to find out the fact that my aunt um, didn't actually pay attention to the brakes. The brakes pretty much gave out on me on 75, and I barely made it home. <laughs> it was an interesting time. I've had that happen, too. It was good times. That's what wow. I got. I had a, I, I have a, a few weird ones. Um, 
few weird. I, I say few weird because some of them, I, I think, I, I don't know, like Joe, what did that, what did you say? It wasn't a miracle, but maybe a, a spiritual experience, a spiritual encounter, spiritual <laughs> encounter. Thank you. Um, so uh, I used to drive truck. Um, I used to drive a semi truck. Uh, and I actually drove for, for quite a few years, probably about six or seven years. Um, and one time I was driving a set of trains and Ooh. I say one time, it, it, this, this was actually a set of trains. That was my set of trains that I carried everywhere. Uh, a set of trains, by the way, is two, two to three trailers that are stuck all in a low, you know, in a line behind you. Um, which those of you who don't know, that's, that's a Michigan thing. If you've never seen that, if you're watching this or listening to this from another state, they don't have them in other states. Typically, they're typically here. Um, I know UPS has them, but that's because their loads are so light that they can. And they typically only go on like I-80. It's, I don't know, Michigan's, Michigan's laws for trucking is different because we, we export a lot of stuff here. We export a lot of like copper and iron, wood mainly. Um, but anyway, so I was driving this trailer for a long time, long, long time. And one day I got loaded up like normal in this normal place. No, nothing was out of the ordinary. And I got ready to go and, you know, I, I was checking my load and doing, doing everything I was supposed to do. And I, which by the way, this is 160,000 pounds gross. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. 160,000 pounds gross. Like I was heavy and I didn't have very far to drive, maybe a few hundred miles, but that was it. But I didn't even get to the road. So like I turned right out of the, the place I got loaded at. And I pulled to the side of the road, you know, I was doing my morning stuff, my checkout and look, checking around the truck and checking my load. Blah, blah, blah. I hop in the truck. I didn't even get up to like four miles an hour. And all of a sudden my, my truck went katunk, and I, you know, lunged forward real hard and I lost all air pressure, which those of you who don't know, you need air pressure to have brakes. <laughs> it's actually, it's, it's backwards. It actually, the air pressure releases the brakes. So if you don't have air pressure, the brakes automatically lock up. It's a safety mechanism. Uh, lo and behold, I get to the back to the what's called the pup. It's the one in the back. And I get back to that trailer and that trailer has literally snapped in half. And the load is like like this. And it busted all the airlines and all of the air leaked out. So like I, I wasn't even up, like I said, like five miles an hour. The brakes just went katunk and I lost all air instantly. Uh, apparently that trailer was repaired and repaired poorly and yeah. yep and when i when i after further inspection it the weld job was such a bad weld job it broke it literally around the aluminum weld job all the way across the entire trailer so i could have been going 65 70 down the road and god waited for that one moment mm -hmm. Right then, and like I said, it, it's I drove this trailer for a long time, months and months and months and months, and now all of a sudden, just I wasn't traveling at all, just kaboom, and that's when it happened. And I know a lot of people, oh, that's just circumstantial. You got lucky. Well, hold on. Uh, number one, my my family and myself, we we do pray a lot, and we pray for safety. And I know my mom prays for us as well. But I, I'm just saying, like. It's the statistical probability of me not right. going down the road in a loaded trailer was very low because the moment I get to a place, I'm usually empty. The moment I, I get to it, the next place I'm getting emptied and then I'm getting reloaded. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm very, very rapidly. I'm almost always loaded. Uh, was always, almost always loaded. Um, another one actually is, is more recent. My dad, uh, was actually given, he actually has, uh, had cancer. And he was only given like, oh my goodness. It was only like six months. Um, that was about a year and a half ago. And he is still kicking strong. And I know my family still prays for him. I know we still pray for him. There's no reason that he should, that this guy should be alive. Uh, and even outside of my dad, my dad was a, oh man, I don't know if my dad's going to be listening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, sorry, dad. Love you. But my dad was a bit of a hippie and mm. yep. And so uh, this is kind of another side side type of miracle. He got, um, do you guys know anything about hepatitis? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Um, there's A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. uh, C is incurable. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. My dad should have hepatitis C from his hippie days and should have passed it to all of us kids. And he doesn't have hepatitis C or, or A, B, or C. He doesn't have it. And we don't have it. Like none of us kids have it. But the reason they thought he had it is because he actually got the testing for it. And they said, yeah, you have hepatitis C. And he, he's like, oh, uh, okay. Now we got, cause I remember when I was a little kid, we had to all be tested for this. Cause if you're a little kid, you could, you could die from it. If you don't, you know, catch this stuff early. And we, yeah, none of us had it at all. He was supposedly diagnosed with it. And lo and behold, we, we prayed over him. And, and shortly after that, he, he was fine. Like nothing. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a weird one. Um, and I got one more, but this was more of an encounter. Uh, a friend of me was, we were driving. It was in Roscommon. It was a blizzard, like bad blizzard. Like you can't see like, you know, 10 feet in front of you type of blizzard. And I was driving a little Toyota Celica. If anybody knows about that, like Crappy car. none of you guys can fit in that car. I can fit in it though. <laughs> like it is a, it's, it's a, a little real, clown car for real. It's a little clown car, right? With a really big nose. Um, it's a clown car that's trying to be a sports car. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. fair. that's a fair description yeah because when you flip the lights on the lights go reep, reep, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway in a blizzard I, I mean you can you figure it out i mean it, front wheel drive manual car i loved it i would still drive that thing today if i had it no you would. uh oh no i would i, I would i would love it uh, but anyway, we were, me and my friend, we were like, Hey, let's go to the store where I was, we were just hanging at, out at a friend's house. Let's go to the store. We're going to get some grinders. And so we left and we didn't know it was a blizzard out and we got stuck in the middle of it all. Cause it just kind of like, oof. and lo and behold, we got sucked into the ditch. Just, it happens, you know, especially a low riding car like that. It just lifts you right up and sucks you right in. Um, so we were trying to, it was just me and my friend and we were trying to push the car out and, uh, you know, just not getting very far. Um, not thinking much of it either. Cause I was in like shorts cause we were in the house and it wasn't snowing before. And, um, you know, I was just in shirts and like shorts on my coat and, you know, so I had sandals on. I think <laughs> it was terrible. Mich it's a Michigan thing. Um, anyway, uh, we ended up, and this is, this is the part we ended up a car pulled up from coming from the opposite direction, right? From the direction we're headed. It came in from that way, so this way, and pulled off to our side of the road. It was a white, like a pure white Cadillac. Very strange, like really weird. And he goes, hey, I was a gentleman that, that hopped out. Hey, do you, do you need help? And we we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we need help. He's like, I got just the thing for you. He popped his trunk, and guess what was in the trunk? Right in the center of the trunk was, looked like a perfectly unused, shiny aluminum shovel and he went around the thing and we were able to and with his help we pushed it out and then he turned to me and he said you know we were thanking him so much oh yeah thanks buddy thanks so, thank you so much and then all of a sudden he goes he turns to me and he holds my hand and, and like kind of shakes it and he goes if you ever need help just ask and i'll be there and my friend and i both heard it and we're like Oh, okay. And he put it, his shovel in the trunk, got into the car, took off. Right. And, um, it wasn't even two seconds since he pulled away. We opened the, our car doors, got into the car and a cop pulled up behind us. What are you guys doing on the side of the road? This blizzard out. And he said, like he was coming from the opposite direction too. He said, and he said, what are you guys doing? And he, I said, well, you know, we just had a guy help, help us pull out and da, 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 And he, you know, and, and we told him the whole story and he said, he looked behind our car. He's like, there's no tire tracks back there. What are you guys talking about? And they got our license and registration and all this stuff. They thought we were nuts because there were no car tracks back there. I think we saw an angel because it was the weirdest thing. I mean, who drives around with just a single like aluminum shovel that looks like it's never been used in the middle of their, their white Cadillac. Like, and nobody, I don't know. It was, it was, it was an experience. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I, I believe that miracles are like, I, I believe that they're real. Uh, so I don't know. 
that's awesome though. Like I'm, I'm so glad that all of us at least have to have some sort of story because do you know what that means is that we're actually number one, open for the conversation. And number two, we're actually looking for that stuff. We're looking for God sightings. We're looking for these golden threads that God weaves in the lives of uh, human beings. Um, so l- let me ask you. I got a question. Oh, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to real. Oh, I just want you to realize the fact that your trailer snapping in half. If it would have actually been on the road, the final destination moment of somebody would have been horrible. <laughs> Bro, bro, I was thinking the exact same thing. I that is somebody's horror movie filled nightmare come to life if that were to actually happen. I'm so glad somebody else said that. Uh, what so driving down the road? Right. Okay, so, so moment where the truck just stops. You go into the truck and it's just like yeah. <laughs> I must have missed so, that one. <laughs> go ahead, so Final go ahead. Destination is a movie that that basically you can't cheat the Reaper, and so death comes uh, for uh, comes for everybody. And like the big antagonist of the movie is death itself, and so a bunch of yeah, people, not death is like a person, but death is yeah. like this invisible occurrence kind of thing yeah yeah okay, in one okay, of the movies okay. there's an actor that you could loosely guess that he might be he, that he might be death but like other than that it's more of just like a universal force <laughs> there's this really famous uh scene from from the second final destination movie of a log truck coming <laughs> loose and logs going everywhere oh, so, man. Like, a whole generation of people will not, dr- myself included, will not drive behind log trucks because of this movie. Good, stay away from us. <laughs> like, and that's what I was thinking. I was like, dude, the final destination moment of that truck just stopping and you just, <gasps> but that's that's the thing that was like, I was worried about like, okay, I would have killed somebody. I know that for a fact. I don't even know if I would have survived. The, no. If all of my brakes would have locked up like that, you know what happened to my load? Oh, dude, sway it back at that speed. No. What did you say, Sean? Shifted forward. They would have crushed Ooh. me. Yep. The abs of those trucks are made of fiberglass, guys. They're not made of anything oh, special. With that load, just that the whole load, load all of the load would have came forward because all of the brakes would have locked up instantly. I'd have died. Like there's no, there's no coming back from. And that. then the car in front of you, and then the car. In front of you. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Going 65, 70 miles an hour. Anyway, sorry. But I'm, sorry. Glad, but I'm glad on on the topic of that, Justin. I'm glad that you brought up a really uh, it's a it's a really interesting point that you have to consider whenever you consider something like miracles. And this is the okay. biggest issue that I have with pure out and out cessationists. And and there are times where I get accused of being a cessationist. And for those of you that don't know, a cessationist. I was going to say you might have to define that. that. They they don't believe that miracles are are for today. They don't believe that miracles happen anymore. Right. Okay. 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 Um. So it, it's it's one of the big issues. And like I said, I, I sometimes get blamed for being a cessationist because I'm like, no, no, we need to make sure that we're keeping it within biblical guardrails. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying they don't exist, but I'm also saying that I don't think people walk around healing other people willy nilly. And so, so you take, you take kind of like just a middle path on that. So ba- like basically, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, like I said, miracles with guardrails, but you okay. said something about how this, dis- the statistical probability that you would have been without a lo- or you would have been in that situation with the load that you had going that speed, that, that confluence of events is so astronomically low that that it, it just simply doesn't make sense. The math doesn't doesn't add up. And I'm a person, I don't believe in chance luck or coincidence. I believe in <laughs> God and statistics. I just do. The, you know, but but if you well, understand I, I, numbers, you understand that that the statistics of that are it's 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 asinine to think that it's anything other than uh, other than a, a, a divine hand making that series of events either that or you need to stop and go and play the lottery immediately <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? right. yeah. Like, yeah. What, what is it like the most common response that you get like after a kind of an incident is 
Oh, it's a miracle no one got hurt. It, Boston. Yeah. yeah. Boston. Like, it's the most common expression that I hear. <clears throat> like, a forklift does something bad. You get in a car accident. It's a miracle no one got hurt. It's like... It, it, here's another statistical one for you. We were, we were driving out of Florida. So my family went on a vacation. I was 11, 12 years old. Like I was preteen, you know, and my brother, my brother and sister, they came with us, obviously my brother and sister were, they did not put their seatbelt on. This was kids. This was a different age. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Wear your (laughs) seatbelt. Do as I say, not as I did. (laughs) So we had, uh, we had a, Oh, what is it? Oh, what kind of car is it? It's it's a it's a car with a big door on the back. Hatchback. Is it hatchback or is a big door opened up like a barn door? Like oh no, you're talking about a station wagon. Station wagon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, station wagon. Wagon. yeah buddy. And so all the luggage was in the back and on the roof. And da, da, da. Anyway, uh, so anyway, we we were driving and it, I, it was just it was just so perfect. And this is the statistical thing. Like this was too too perfect i was sleeping we had we had a hard time at disney and you know it was just a fun time in florida visiting family for weeks right it was it was great so we were just leaving we were in atlanta georgia and we were heading north on 75 and just you know trying to keep with the flow of traffic any anybody been to atlanta georgia you know they have a i think it's a six or seven lane highway seven Seven lane thank you it's seven lane and seven lane it's gigantic and it goes for quite a ways right and cause it's just because it splits off in, in a whole bunch of different ways. Anyway, so we were driving and I had, I was asleep. I was in dead sleep. And I only vaguely remember doing this. I remember waking up out of a dead sleep, turning to my brother and sister and going, you need to put your seatbelt on like mom and dad said. And it went, and went right back to sleep. And not even like two minutes later, like my brother and my sister went click, click. And then a, a logging truck hit my mom and I on this side, another truck hit us on this side, two or three vehicles in front of us went like, like we T-boned them hard. It was, it was one lady. She slipped on the ice as she was coming in and they, they, she just happened to stop in front of us. We were the car that hit her and she was fine. She just busted her collarbone, but we hit her and created an entire car pile up around us. Right. And so my door was completely caved in but I was sleeping on a pillow, so I got no glass on my on me at all. I, I think the the window barely cracked. Like, it was just perfect. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm a storyteller, so forgive me. But you you just happened to mention that the statistics, and I'm like, well, this that one should not have happened. I was I was in a dead sleep. Those are no those are, those of you who know me. I when I sleep, I I pass out. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm not waking up. Um, but yeah, I just woke up for that one twenty second. Hey, mom and dad said. And just passed right back up. But so let, let me ask this then. Okay. And so this is kind of like culminating. Okay. So we all, we all believe in miracles. We all have this experiences. We all believe the possibilities, right? So we're all, I don't want to say we're, we're an open book when it comes to this, but we're willing to have the conversation here. Right. Um, and we've had these experiences. So then I would, I would ask this question and kind, kind of like answer the elephant in the room that some may be having. Uh, why does it seem like there's many people, maybe I should have reworded this question, that there's a lot of people out there that say, why does it seem like there's no more miracles then? Even in the church, there's a ton of people in the church that believe this way. I think Hollywood. Yeah? Hollywood has a big Flesh thing that out. It. So you got Miracle on 34th Street, different movies like that, where they just, they dramatize it so much where you're looking for like the overzealous angel coming down and just taking you by the hand and picking you up instead of the common thing that's going to save you. Like the accidental bolt snapping off or just moving you to the right, to the left, or just switching up your routine or getting that strange feeling of, hey, I should call this person or, hey, I should look down. And see the fact that there's like a twenty dollar bill on the ground, or something like that. That's not like over dramatized where it's. So you think that they're like painting a falsified picture of right. miracles? 
More or less. Yeah. They do okay. it for everything else. Why wouldn't they do it for miracles? I mean, Hollywood is so dramatized that they actually... They almost ruin real things that actually happen. It's so funny that you'd say that. I just watched a video about that. Like, They were talking about media. Not social media, just media in general. And that was one of the things that they said was there's so many people stuck in the digital world that they have no idea how to handle the real world. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and that's literally be becoming a thing with the metaverse and these, yeah. uh, the yeah, augmented, the like this idea of the augmented reality and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's actually a movie right now on Netflix, I mean, Amazon. That I tried to finish, but they so dramatized it and everything else. It's about this one guy who the actual pilot like dies in the middle of their plane ride, and he has to learn how to. He has like a little bit of flying lessons with a Cessna, but he's on a jet plane. So I don't know if anybody realizes the fact that the speed, the angle, the velocity of the difference between like a golf a golf six and a Cessna. I mean, it's just there are differences. A little bit. Like you have <laughs> to know how to fly this thing. So I mean, I understood what they were talking about, and it was just they just dramatized it that I couldn't even watch it. I'm sorry. So okay, all right. So I, I like that answer. I, I I actually didn't didn't even think about that. Like we're so numb, or just we have this expectancy of how it should be, and that's what we're looking for, and that's it. Right. Hmm. What about you guys? Why do you think that there's so many people out there that that uh, even in the church that believe that there there are no miracles? I believe you said cessationism. Cessationalism. Cessationism. cessationalism. Is, uh, yeah. The the idea that that there are no more miracles. There's absolutely none. Okay. Why do you think I that think, is? Oh, go ahead. I think personally people are too busy to see the miracles going on. Hmm. Nobody wants to take time out and look around them and basically watch. They don't see it. I can see it's that. Yeah. It's it's happening everywhere. See that? What? See how I did that? He said they can't even see that. And I said, I can see that. Yeah? No? Anybody? Justin, you need to get out from behind the computer. I don't, come on, guys. I don't get very many of these. That's a dead joke, Sully. He tried. He tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> that. No, I think, I think it's a good point. That is a good point, though. Like, you're, if you're not even looking for it, like, if you're so distracted, just in general, distracted, then, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes you got to get out and touch the grass. It just happens. Yeah. Especially you, Justin. What? Stop burning it, too. <laughs> It wasn't grass that burned. It was the compost It, it was the leaves. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That one's, I'm never going to live that one down. Tom um, came up to me at work and goes, hey, I heard you did this. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was leaving it alone. Tom found out? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Sorry. I burnt my backyard up. <laughs> and, like, the fire department had to come out the whole nine yards. It was awesome. Okay. But just for the record... This is this is going to be online. So just for the record, I had it in a barrel. I had a lid over the barrel, and I had a screen over the the barrel. So like, I did what I was supposed to, and there was no like red flag warning thing for no burning. So because it was supposed to rain that day, which apparently it did. It literally rained like ten minutes later after <laughs> after yeah. they put it out. It, it rained. rained like an hour later, and my windows oh my were down. Goodness. Yeah, sorry. It's just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Sorry. Anyway, yeah. But it, yeah, I burned my neighbors. It was it wasn't even that. It was like their leaves on top of the yard. So it was fine. It's fine. But if you're if you're my neighbor and you're watching, Joe, I love you. Um <laughs> Joe's my neighbor, so over there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh anyway, so I I, th I think you guys have some really good points, man. I just der derailed this thing. I think you guys have some really good points with uh, why there's a lot of people that don't believe in it. Um, so I, I think uh, part 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 of that before we hop off of this, yeah, I want to I want to piggyback off of what Sully said because I do I do think that that pop media has has a hand in this, but let's be honest that. There's 
oftentimes a lot of similarities between the way we hear miracles taught and the way that we see miracles depicted by by like pop fiction and all of that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, I, 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 there's this analogy that um, was given to me that I want you guys to paint a picture. I think Sully, this will be particularly um, resonant for you. Um, back in the day, soldiers or knights or warriors would have a shield, like a physical shield. And a lot of a lot of um, stylings of shields were made so that way you could put them down in the ground. If you ever notice that a lot of shields have have a pointed bottom to, bottom to them, right. it's so that way they could cut down into the ground, and you could kneel down, and the the shield would protect you from projectiles. And the idea is you you see all of the arrows that are that are missing you and and all of that kind of stuff and and you you realize to an extent what what the what what the shield is doing for you but it's not until you stop or until until the firing stops and you get up and you see all of those arrows sitting in the actual shield itself when you realize just exactly what the shield did for you <laughs> Oh wow! And so that—that's like that's hindsight right there, right? I and mean, I it's more than just that. But yeah, I think there's something to the <clears throat> idea of making sure that. I think the more one of the biggest reasons why, like, I I'm I'm that guy a lot of the time, where I'm like, well, actually. What is the context of that? Well, actually, what about this and that? Because I think the more accurate we are, the more beautiful the picture actually is. It's when we get bombastic or it's, it's when we get out of pocket and grab and grab things from here and things from there to make a point that it, it's when we take it as a whole picture that 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 you get the most beauty and it is the most special. And so... I think oftentimes when it comes to something like miracles, they're taught to be these miraculous interventions in such a radical way, or they're taught to be something very tangible. Like, I don't want it to, 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 to side rail into, oh, it's, it, this is, I'm just singling out things like the prosperity gospel or something along those lines. Because this is a deeper conversation than just taking aim at the low-hanging fruit. But if what you're expecting is this thing over here, and what you're being taught miracles look like are this thing over here, when something over here happens, you don't know what you're looking at. And unfortunately, there is a measure of all, all people know is Hollywood. All people know is that style of teaching. It's not even, you don't even get a chance to get to the distracted part of it because they have been taught something and the thing that they've been taught is off from center. Mm -hmm. And so they could be seeing it and not realize what they're seeing. Right. But, but again, so like, like, like Sully said, it, it, sometimes you never know. Sometimes you don't have a clue and that's, that's the whole gimmick of this gift of faith because we don't, if we were left to generate our own faith in things, we would fall on our face. Nobody would believe in God. Nobody would because this thing is too out of bounds for us to sit here and believe in by our own power. But because these things, the, these things take place, around us almost like hovering around us in a way that we don't all, it's not necessarily our our responsibility to really understand and we don't always see the full picture rarely do we ever see the full picture that yeah there's a measure of we have to put the faith that we've been given into god that this is that 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 he is still very active and very at work because honestly that's that's what the Bible promises anyway. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's actually a pretty good pretty good point because uh, let me let me ask this question and I, we kind of talked about this in the chili chat a little bit. Um, I be, I do believe in miracles, but I I, I want to give a, a small caveat to that. I believe God may work differently than He used to when it comes to miracles because how many times could a miracle be misconstrued as some form of technological trickery today like i mean literally with all the ai technology and everything out else out there and the deep fakes and whatever you could come up you could have a video of somebody literally being raised from the dead like on the gurney has the the things on them and everything their heart stopped and they've been dead for you know an hour completely dead right and then all of a sudden one person prays over them and they come to life well, we've seen that so much, and we know what, what Hollywood is capable of. I think God, I'm not saying he wouldn't do that. What I'm saying is, is I think God may have changed his tact a little bit because what would that, I mean, what would that, what, what would that accomplish if, if it was just misconstrued as something? And I don't mean just by somebody, I mean by like the world, the majority. Well, uh, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say it, it. I'm not saying that God doesn't do them. I'm saying that He does, but I think He may do them in a different manner. Uh, because if you look at if you look at some of the ancient miracles, so like uh, a lot of the miracles in the Bible uh, are stuff like. Um, well, actually, here I have I have a short list here, a short short list. So like we have uh, immaculate conception. That's you know Jesus being born of a virgin, right? Uh, Daniel in the den of lions. We have, you know, a, a strange miracle, Jesus turning water into wine, right? Weird. Um, feeding the multitudes. Jesus, this is all New Testament stuff. Jesus walking on water. Uh, some, a lot of the Older Testament ones are stuff like, uh, and this, there's a lot of these, by the way, where it says she was barren and could not have children. Like, there's actually a lot of miracle births. Yeah, Rachel was one of them. Rachel couldn't have kids for a long time. And then all of a sudden, just poof. Right out of nowhere, and 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 happened. Um, so did Sarah and Abraham, right? And all that, everything that happened with that, uh, the uh, manna falling from heaven. Like these are a lot of the miracles that are just like, wow, whoa, that is just so amazing. Uh, but I think God may work in a different manner because of all of the all of the fakeness that is out there. And so he may work and may be trying to reach people through miracles if, if, if that be the way that he reaches somebody. Because let's face it, like, let me ask this question. I don't have this one prepped up, but let me ask this question. What is the purpose in a miracle? Ooh. What's the purpose? God. Why is God doing this? Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Glorify God. Glorify God. I mean, in the simplest fashion, I, I would say that that's it. Yeah. Because even if it's somebody coming to God and you joining his kingdom, right? Well, that's still glorification to God. Because as a Christian, they're they're glorifying God, right? It's it's good for them, yes, but it's to glorify God, you know. And that's the reason. Even Jesus said this. Remember when they were going to raise Lazarus? Actually, it wasn't raising Lazarus. If you guys remember the story, uh, and you you may not know the entire story, but the whole story is this: Jesus was actually a messenger was sent to Jesus and said, "Jesus, Master, Master." The one whom you love, in other words, one of your best friends, is dying. He's sick, right? And I believe, wasn't he given a, that message twice? I believe he was given it a couple of times. And oh, yeah. I think he was given it a couple of times. And both times the disciples are like, they kind of like, you know, well, like, Jesus, shouldn't we go? And da da da, da. And Jesus is like, no, no, this will this will be for your, this will be good. I believe he says something like, this will be to the glory of God. And he just kind of leaves it at that. And then he gets brought up again and he said, and then, you know, they say, um, no, 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 this will be fine. And then eventually the disciples come out or eventually he gets the message that says, nope, Lazarus is dead. Do you want to come to the funeral? And then the disciples, or Jesus says, says to the disciples, he's only sleeping. And then the disciples very ignorantly say, uh, well, oh, so, well, Jesus, come on. I mean, if he's sick, obviously resting would be a good thing to do. Jesus is like, Jesus finally had to say, like, I think he said, 
he's asleep or he's resting. I think Jesus said that like three times. And then eventually he said, he finally had to come out and say, guys, listen, he's dead. He's been dead. I'm going to go there. I'm going to raise him. And then he goes there. And then Jesus actually said something very interesting. His Lazarus, his sisters came up. They're weeping. They're freaking out. They're just there. Why didn't you come and heal him? And, and well, understandably so. They've been weeping for probably three or four days up to this point. And then all of a sudden Jesus says, whoa, 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 hold on. And it's, I believe it even says that Jesus even had tears in his eyes. He said, hold on. This has happened to bring glory to God. And so that you can see that the son of man doesn't just have power over all of these miraculous weird things that we do. He even has the power over death and life itself. Right. And then this is when he turns around and says the famous thing, roll the stone away. Right. No, 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 Jesus, don't do this. And I'm just saying this, this is one of the, one of the like ama most amazing miracles ever happening. Some guy that's been dead for several days was raised from the dead. And do you know, do you know uh, why he was raised on the fourth day? Wasn't it something about the ancient people of those days? Like they believed that. That, that like, a person could raise after three days. Right. Like if you, if you were dead for three days, you were dead, dead. Like there was dead and then there was dead, dead. Yep. Yeah. So that's but, why we did it on the fourth day. Yeah. But that that's a, I think you, you, you summed it up perfectly there, Sean, was that the purpose in miracles is to bring glory to God. And that's why I say, and, and I'm not, I'm not super dogmatic on this, but I think that the Lord works differently today because in order to bring glory to him, he may have to do miracles differently or do miracles in more of a personal manner or do miracles so that it's not construed as something, you know, fake. I don't know. Now don't ask me what that means. I don't know what that means. I'm just saying, I think God may do it in a different manner. Um, although I will tell you, I've heard of some amazing miracles that sound awfully biblical in some of these like third world countries. Yep. Yeah. Some like amazing miracles. And these are like miracles that have happened within the last like five or 10 years, like missionaries that, um, oh, what was I, oh, I wish I remember his name. He, he was in a head hunting society. Like they are cannibals in this society and like really way out there in the sticks. Right. And God really convicted him to go out there and reach these people. And he, he was reaching these people and they started building a little community there of people who were no longer going to eat their neighbors, <laughs> but the surrounding tribes that were still cannibalistic got upset because their people had changed. They were, no willing, they were no longer willing to eat people and kill people and be headhunters and stuff like that. And they changed their ways. And so uh, one day, the three leaders of the other tribes like in the area came to, came to the village and they said um, something, something to the effect of, where's the, where's the um, army of light that you had last night? And then he goes off on this whole... Apparently they, all of the tribes, all three tribes joined together and were going to destroy this little village that they created. And apparently when they came in at night, there were angels surrounding the whole village. Like nobody heard anything going on. And the three tribe, like the three leaders of the tribes came in and they, they got saved because he's like, let me tell you a story. And, but anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying, I, I, I would think, um, what do you guys think about that? Like, do you think God would work in a different manner? Uh, because of all of these fake things, because it's very easy to fake a miracle nowadays. Very easy. I've seen plenty of them online. Like debunk. Yeah, I think miracles. we. I think we we give a lot of credit to what what we think would happen if we experienced a miracle. I think there's I think there's a lot of emphasis put on. Well, I just need my burning bush, and that like that would be the thing. That would like that God would, just giving you the command to do something. Yeah. Well, yes, but like in a, in a, in an overtly miraculous way, like no, no, this was a feeling. No, this is what I think. Like, no, we're talking about like a, a full blown, full tilt miracle right in front of your face. That is unquestionably an act of God. Hmm. And, 
I think the reality is is that even even outside of the parameters of technology and things like that, I think us as humans will always find a reason to negotiate our way out of thinking that it was what it was because we've seen we've seen that that core concept that is the kindling that something like AI or something like tech or something like the current climate is just fuel for. Yeah. But you still have that kindling of humans and humans missing the mark and things like that. Then you couple that with something like, okay, so a lot of what we think about when we think about mir miraculous events has to co or comes from Jesus and comes from this is what Jesus did. Okay. Where does it say one single point that we'll do the same things that Jesus did? And I know, I know, because I I'm, I'm misquoted. Hmm? You mean like when, when Jesus walked on water and all that kind of stuff? Uh, anything from healings, like walking around heal, healing people at the drop of a dime, um, making it sound like we're going to run into demons on a regular basis, that we're going to need to be uh, lining people out the door to start exercising people left, right, and center. Like, <laughs> all right, everybody line else. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but there's there's a verse where Jesus says, you will do these things in greater for I'm going to the Father is a rough translation. Translation by Joe. <laughs> um but and and I and I was I was one of them that that would go out there and quote that as a, a rationale for why people should be walking around performing miracles and why all of this stuff was such a thing and all of that kind of stuff. It's a bad, it's a bad exegesis of, of the text to think, to, to say that that's what, that, that that's what Jesus is, is saying that we're going to run around healing people the same way he did. But it, it raises a question. Why, why do we think that we're going to be doing those same things that Jesus did. And if we don't think that, if we take it outside of that prerequisite, now what is the door open for? You know what I mean? Because if we walk around thinking that, that you know, things like can the enemy use people or can God use atheists or can, can, you know, it, what's the difference between an atheist buying your groceries or or God providing for you or or, or all of these different things? It's 52 different flavors. You take your pick. I, I'm, I'm for, for for anybody who isn't the three people sitting sitting opposite me. I pull out those exa exact uh, uh, illustrations because that's the conversation that blew this whole topic up in, <laughs> in, in the chili chat. Um, yeah, but. But yes, and what? A, why does? Why are there so many lines and restrictions and caveats and all of those kinds of things? Again, all we need is the biblical guardrails and to understand that any kind of uh, d divine intervention supersedes who we think is an enemy or who we who we wonder whether or not God would use or what situation God would reach into. And, and that goes all, all directions, right? Because you have humans that will make every excuse in the book that will get it wrong, that will miss the mark, that will make the minor things, the major things literally been happening for centuries. Bible testifies to it. And so do the history books. So, what what happens if we rearrange the pieces on what we think miracles are or aren't and how much more makes a lot more sense? Hmm. Wow. And he hits it heavy. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about this, about a, about a topic like this is, yes, I am loud. I am opinionated. Anybody who rocks with me, especially behind a microphone, should know that I come with a caution label. I am opinionated and I don't, I don't, I don't mind 
tossing tossing some weight around in talking about these things and i i don't mean that my personal weight but like i don't know uh playing rough a little bit in the sandbox to 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 to, to get the the opinions across and all of that kind of stuff because the idea here is that not none of us are sitting here saying that we have the market cornered on this thing right none of us are sitting here saying oh we have this whole miracle thing figured out to right. a t I'm I I do think that there's a lot given to us if we read between the lines in in the Bible, but that still isn't that still is is a far cry from being able to say I've got the market cornered on this whole miracle thing. So unpacking these things and having these conversations in the spirit of truth and coming together to to unpack the truth in in a God honoring way. That's purposefully pointed towards honoring God to respecting the text to, you know, I, I call it coloring within the lines. Okay. You know, yeah. then, then there's a lot of power in kicking the can around a little bit because it gives some freedom to be able to say, well, this is a thing that I've experienced and some things that make you go, hmm. You know what I mean? That it's not a matter of trying to figure it all out, but it's a matter of taking the beat to look at the reality of the world around you and what the Bible says. Amen. That is awesome. You know, I just came up with like three more questions. I think we might have to continue this. I don't want to have to. I, know, I was thinking, and I, I'll end this, so don't answer it. Don't answer it. Um, What of those are are the people that are super over the top with the miracles, and like you said, like are, you know, are casting out demons every 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 time they turn around a corner, and are you know somebody has a, a foot that's a little bit shorter than the other one, and so they lengthen it, and uh, you know, miracle. Sorry, <laughs> I had to think that. No. Are those people? And like I said. And don't answer us. Maybe we can continue this a little bit next week or maybe in the chili chat. Are they hindering God's work? Or are they actually helping? Okay. So let's try to end it. Let's end it on that one. <laughs> Do you mind? Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's its, that's its own can of worms. So I think I we should let know. that box stay, stay shut for right I now because otherwise we're okay. going for another hour. Go ahead and hit us out, Sully. <laughs> so, thanks, thanks for joining us, everybody. I appreciate this. This, this, uh, this is a full conversation, and I think overflowing because this, like you said, this, this could open up just so much more. Uh, miracles are awesome, and God wants to use them. Uh, if, if there's anything we could take away from this, I think it was uh, what exactly what what Sean said, which was, "Hey, listen, all miracles are to bring glory to God." So. Uh, praise God. Uh, I'll go ahead and end this in a word of prayer real quick. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we've had together. I pray, Lord, that you please uh, continue to bless the various ministries that are out there that are um, trying to do your will, Lord, and to grow your kingdom uh, and to point other people to you, Jesus. I pray, Lord, you also do that to uh, or help use us as well, Father, biblical children. Uh, we love you so much, Father, and we thank you. Pray this all in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Uh, so this has been Justin. This has been Sally. This has been Sean. This has been Joe. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Bye.